Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about um, the energy balance for extended surfaces or for fins. How do we derive the differential equation um, to solve uh, the temperature distribution, the heat flux um, down an extended surface or fin? So here's an example uh, illustration of, uh, of an extended surface where you have a, you know, a flat plate. This would be the base of the fin. Um, and then you have a fin of arbitrary shape sticking off of it, okay? In this particular example, the shape is um, cross-sectional area changes down the length of the fin. It doesn't matter. We're going to derive this for the very general case. Um, all right, so the first thing we need to do, of course, is an energy balance. So uh, let's just write our energy balance. Let's say delta E would be the change in energy, or it could be per unit time. Um, accumulation of energy equals energy in minus energy out plus any energy generated, okay? We're doing this energy balance on this little control volume that you can see drawn here. Okay, so we have, uh, this is gonna be the positive X direction. Okay, so we have a uh, flux going in at a location X, coming out at X plus delta X, okay? Um, there's a cross-sectional area, which is A subscript C, and then of course a surface area on the outside of the fin, right? And um, the idea is this fin is cooling, okay? There's some convection that allows this, this fin to extract heat or, or absorb heat. And so, so there's some energy going out of the fin along the surface area of the fin. And that's what makes uh, the energy balance for fin unique from a wall or a pipe or a cylinder is that we're, we're have in the energy balance, the control volume has a, a convection loss, okay? So let's write out all the terms. We're talking about steady state. There's going to be 1D steady state conduction. So uh, there's no, all right, SS is steady state. There's no accumulation. There's no change in energy. And uh, generally, there's no generation on a fin or an extended surface. So then we just have energy in equals energy out. Okay, so zero equals what's the energy going in to uh, at the location X uh, of this control volume? It's just the uh, QX, okay? So what we can do is we can call this the flux times the area um, at location X, okay? And um, let me denote that this is the cross-sectional area we're talking about here. So this is A subscript C, um, cross-sectional area of the fin. The energy going out is gonna be minus the flux times the area at X plus delta X, okay? So this is our uh, in and out of this surface and then this surface but we also have a heat flux out due to convection from the surface area of the fin, okay? So we know that convection, the heat loss due to convection follows Newton's law of cooling. So we have minus H A, this is subscript S, okay? And we're gonna call it a delta A S because it's a differential surface area that depends on the width of your control volume, this, this DX width, um, T, minus T infinity, okay, T surface minus T infinity. This is Newton's law of cooling. So in this case, we have two energy out terms coming out of the control volume, uh, cross-sectional area and from the surface and then in on this side. So this differential surface area is going to be, um, in the most general sense, it's the perimeter times delta X, okay, the cross-sectional area. So this P would, would represent uh, the perimeter for any shape, okay? So this is, uh, in this case, we have we have a rod. So the, the perimeter is gonna be what? P equals two pi R. But if you had a square, for example, if this is what the cross section of your fin, a rectangular or a square fin, it would be, uh, your perimeter would equal two times your width plus two times the thickness, okay? So it doesn't matter what it is. In a general sense, you can just write P is the perimeter. But if you took your perimeter, and then you multiplied by dx, then you would have the surface area, okay? So whatever your differential uh, change in x is. So in our case, we can put this in, it's gonna be uh, minus h perimeter times um, delta x, t at x minus t infinity, okay? So this is what we're gonna replace that convection term with. And this is what we want because we want everything in terms of x, okay? We're trying to drive a differential equation that's one dimensional along the length of the fin. So you're gonna see that instead of writing it in terms of a differential surface area, we wanna express it in terms of the differential X. Um, and of course, to, derive, to, to 
get our differential equation, we want to divide by delta x. So let's take this equation and divide by delta x. Um, so we have 0 equals the flux times the cross-sectional area at x um, minus the flux times the cross-sectional area at x plus, um, well, OK, this is the cross-sectional area. I'm just going to denote it as, like this. It's a function of x evaluated at x plus delta x. Um, we can also fix that in here. Let's just say this is a function of x and it's evaluated at x plus delta x. So there's evaluated at two different x positions. And then the this whole term now is going to be divided by delta x. And then we'll have minus h p t at x minus t infinity. OK, so the reason we're doing this uh, is because we have a very familiar form here. So this is if we take the limit as delta x goes to 0. It's the position um, at, well, generally the derivative is, is some function at x plus delta x minus the function at x divided by delta x. So what this is going to give us is the negative derivative. So you can say negative um, d by q cross-sectional area. I'm going to keep it so we, we're clear that it could be a function of x by dx. Okay, so that's the limit as this goes, as delta x goes to zero. This is the definition of a derivative or definition of the negative derivative. So if you swap these two terms, it's the derivative. And then minus h p t of x minus t infinity. And what we're going to do is we know that heat is conducting down the length of the fin or the extended surface. So you're going to plug in Fourier's law, uh, which is uh, heat flux is minus k, which is the thermal conductivity, times dt dx, or k grad t. Um, and then most cases, I mean, we're talking about a, a, a basic or an entry example here. Thermal conductivity is not going to be a function of temperature on the temperature ranges that these fins are working on. Um, so we can pull it out like a simplified heat diffusion equation. This will be a simplified fin equation. So we'll say 0 equals, and we're going to plug in Fourier's law into this Q term, and we're going to uh, K will come out of the derivative because it's constant. So the negatives will cancel out, and you're left with K d by dx of the cross-sectional area dt dx minus hp t of x minus t infinity. Okay, so now we've got a differential equation. Um, we can simplify this a little bit, and let's do that. So uh, the first thing we can do is, is take this term and do the chain rule on it. Okay, so take the derivative of this is a function of x. So derivative of this, and then the derivative of this. So I'm sorry, the product rule or the chain rule. So um, let's write that zero equals, uh, let's say this is AC and the other term is dt dx. Okay, so the first thing we're going to get is k times a c d squared t, the second derivative of t with respect to x squared, um, plus k d a c dx dt dx. Okay, derivative of first times the derivative of the second. Um, h p t at x minus t infinity. And uh, to make this a little bit more, uh, a little simpler, Let's divide by uh, k times ac. So you just have the second derivative by itself here. And we'll say 0 equals second derivative of temperature with respect to position plus 1 over ac, dac, cross-sectional area, dx, dt, dx, minus hp over k, ac, t, minus t infinity. Of course, t a, our cross-sectional area is a function of x. This is the general fin equation, okay? So this is uh, the differential equation you want to solve to get the temperature profile down a fin. And once you have the temperature profile, you have all the information you need. Um, you can solve for heat fluxes. You can solve for all sorts of different heat problems. So that's it. We start with the simple energy balance of a control volume. The only difference from a, an energy balance on a solid wall or a solid pipe or something is that we're considering convective losses down the uh, length of the pin or the fin. In this case, it's a pin. Um, so you have to include this extra uh, convective term. But otherwise, we're good. A very common simplification, one we're going to look at because it makes the uh, equations a little bit easier to solve, is if you have fins of uniform cross-section. 
Okay, so if your cross-sectional area, if you had like a square fin that stuck out, is not a function of x, then when you take the derivative here, that term would go to zero. And so another equation we're gonna to wanna to solve is a little bit simpler. This is the second derivative of the temperature with respect to x squared minus hp over k ac t minus t infinity, okay? So these are fine. Um, of course, engineers don't like to solve these equations in real units because uh, we can apply any sort of scaling to them if we look at them just non-dimensionally. So let's non-dimensionalize this equation to make it a little bit easier to solve. So we need to look at what is a, we're gonna use theta to non-dimensionalize the temperature. Um, we use Z or, or Z to, to non-dimensionalize the length scale. So Z is a little easy, okay? So look, you have a fin, this is looking at the fin from the side. This would be the base of the fin at X equals zero. And this would be the tip of the fin at X equals L. So it's got some length L. That's a natural length scale to divide our, um, or to normalize our X variable by. So X over L is gonna be Z. Okay, I think this will work out beautifully. And the other one you can see in our equation, we have a T minus T infinity. Okay, so you're looking at how the temperature changes relative to T infinity. So, so the idea is, you know, if, okay. If, I found this on the web for looking at relativity infinity. Check it out. So, the idea is we're going to uh, have the temperature of this fin cooling down the fin. So when it cools all the way, it's going to get to the temperature of the outside air. If you had perfect cooling, okay. So the uh, you want to compare what the temperature is at its hottest point to or coldest point to what it is if it cools according to what the fluid temperature is. Um, and so, for example, if you do T minus T infinity divided by the maximum temperature difference that's going to show up here, which is temperature base minus T infinity, okay? What happens is at the very base of the fin, the temperature is going to be TB, which is temperature of the base. So this is going to be TB, and this whole this theta will be 1, okay? So the base of the fin, theta equals one. And then what happens is uh, when the temperature of the fin uh, matches the cooling temperature of the fluid, uh, T equals T infinity, this is gonna go to zero. So theta is gonna go to zero. So what you're doing now is you're non-dimensionalizing this to look at how the temperature profile is changing from one to zero instead of from TB to T infinity. Okay, so this is a natural scale and you're gonna see how uh, simply it's gonna fit into this equation due to the, the way that the temperature shows up here. So let's do that, let's non-dimensionalize this equation. So here's our, our full general equation with the cross-sectional area that can change. And what we're gonna need to find out is what is uh, the second derivative with respect to temperature, um, as well as uh, the second derivative with respect to position. So let's take our terms, let's rearrange it and um, we have T B minus T infinity times theta equals T minus T infinity. Okay, I multiplied the denominator over. Take the derivative of each side. You have T B minus T infinity D theta equals D T, okay, because this is a constant. And then what you're gonna have, if you take the second derivative, same thing, T B minus T infinity D squared theta equals D squared T. Okay, so now we've got a term to substitute in the second derivative with respect to temperature. Let's do the same thing with uh, our space, spatial uh, variable. So we have L times Z equals X. Take the derivative, that's gonna be L DZ equals DX. And then for this term, it's actually DX squared when you're looking on, on the bottom of this derivative. Okay, so we need to square this. You don't take a second derivative actually L squared and then DZ squared equals DX squared, okay? So this is gonna be the substitution we make for our, our other derivative. All we need to do is plug these terms in, okay? So let's plug this in for DT. Let's plug this in for DX squared. And we're gonna have zero equals um, TB minus T infinity uh, times D squared theta divided by L squared D z squared okay so that's the two substitutions for this and this and then we have plus one over a c um on the bottom here this dx let's see dx is going to equal l dz so we're going to get an l on bottom and there's going to be d a c d z same thing here uh we need to have this temperature come in dt is going to be this term 
So we're gonna get a t b minus t infinity d theta, and then divided by d z with an l is gonna be l squared out front. Okay, and then um, for this term here, it's gonna be uh, t minus t infinity. We need to put in terms of their our dimensionless theta. So if you look here, t minus t infinity is just t b minus t infinity times theta. So it's minus um, h p over k a c t b minus t infinity times theta. Okay, so that's these terms. Let's um, multiply by l squared. Okay, so we're gonna get an l squared here, and these terms will cancel the l squared out. Um, you can divide by t b minus t infinity, and it'll cancel out of every term because you know the left hand side is zero. And then, yeah, let's write this out. We have zero equals the second derivative d theta dz squared plus one over a c d cross-sectional area dz um, d theta dz minus h p l squared over k a c times theta. Okay, to write this in a form which is very common for differential equations, let's define m is like a, it's just a math term. Some m squared will be a variable we're gonna plug in. And we're gonna define m squared as a collection of these constants uh, or, or constants, h, p, l squared over k, a, c. And we do this because we're gonna get a form of an equation which can apply, it doesn't have to, okay, for, for heat transfer, this will be m. And if we're looking at electron transport, you know, this equation could be derived with a different m but we're gonna get a general equation which you could have in any sort of transport class. Um, and we're gonna plug this in, we're gonna plug m squared. So our general fin equation is d squared theta dz squared plus one over a c d a c dz d theta dz minus m squared theta equals zero. This is the general fin equation, now the dimensionless general fin equation. It's a second order homogeneous differential equation. There's many techniques to solve this. Um, and now it's dimensionless, so don't need to worry about the length of the fin or the specifics of the fin. Uh, this is gonna be the preferred equation to solve. Of course, there's a little bit easier one, and that's if the fin had a uniform cross-sectional area, this would go to zero, and you have d squared theta, dz squared minus m squared theta equals zero. And so this would be uh, the fin equation if you had a uniform cross-sectional area. And so this is it. This is how we do the energy balance. The takeaways would be, you know, we take a differential control volume down an arbitrary, a fin with arbitrary cross-sectional area that can be changing. Do an energy balance. We always wanna do an energy balance on everything. You get the differential equation uh, for a general fin. This is dimensionless and then uh, we are also gonna talk about uh, fins of uniform cross-section, a little bit easier to solve this equation. And let's keep in mind when we talk about fins, what the theta and Z is. So theta is gonna be our temperature term, and it's gonna scale between, uh, instead of TB to T infinity, theta scale between one and zero. So we're looking for theta to go down along the length of the fin. And if we write it this way, it doesn't matter if the fin is cooling or the fin is heating, it's that theta, theta always goes from one to zero um, by the way we set this up. So it counts for heating or cooling or whatever you want. It's just how does the temperature change from the base relative to the fluid temperature? And then the length scale, of course, goes from zero to one. And that's it for the energy balance on a fin.